So here's what I'm trying to figure out about Dynamite. Was it a matter of the crowd sucked because the show was lame? Or was the crowd lame because the show sucked? I'm sure some of you are already in the launch position with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire. But this was not good. This is a go-home show before All Out. Yeah, not very good. It really wasn't. And not stop pretending like it was. Like, there are good elements of it, for sure. But man, for a company that had generated some recent excitement and buzz around it, I was expecting better and quite a bit better than what we got on Wednesday night, that's for sure. Like, for example... The opening tag match that I know a lot of people are going to like because they only care about moves and matches anymore. You know, FTR versus Santana and Ortiz. I understand there's a pinnacle versus inner circle component here. But are any of these guys in a featured angle for the pay-per-view? Are any of these guys booked on a featured match? Like, serious question. Like, if not, then what the hell are they doing on this show? You have enough matches on the card for Sunday that you need to be pumping up, that you need to be hyping up. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be burning a lot of time on this show with guys that aren't booked to appear on the goddamn pay-per-view. It's weird to me. It just is. So, you know, the, the opener just was there. And what I really found weird about it is Starting off segment two with CM Punk's promo. If you're going to put him that early in the show, why wouldn't you put him at the beginning? Now, maybe you're hoping to pop the Q2 rating. Or maybe maybe it does a little bit, but is it worth it? I don't know. Uh, the CM Punk promo segment, like, he starts talking. It looked like we were actually going to get out of the, hey, I'm glad to be back, happy to be here stuff and start to talk a little bit more about the actual match with Darby Allen Sunday at All Out. Start to pump that up, start to hype that up. No better time, I guess, than the freaking go-home show to do so. Um, but then he's getting attacked. And by these random fucking guys, who's a Daniel Garcia and who's the other two jobber jabronis with him? Like, what the hell are they being put in this spot for? Why the hell are they getting featured here? Sting and Darby Allen eventually come out and make the save. And, you know, you got to be careful with this stuff, Tony Khan. Don't you dick tease us, Stinger. Stinger. I know you said you were stepping aside because you have confidence in Darby Allen. You're a boy. But, <laughs> just saying, maybe we'd rather have Sting and CM Punk. And let's do it at Bound for Glory. <laughs> I see a bug Darby Allen at the end. The face off? Like, it's kind of weird. Like, you do that type of stuff to me, there should be more heat. You do that type of stuff to me, there should be some type of simmering tension, some type of real animus, something. You don't have any of that. Just looks like CM Punk's talking shit to his much younger uh, nephew or something like that. It's just weird. That's all I'm saying. It's just weird. Um, but still, regardless of the fact that um, you, know, you have other matches, All Out is a one-match show. Darby Allen and CM Punk has to main event. They cannot possibly be that obtuse to bury this like in the middle of the card. That would be stupid. Although, when I look at how it's kind of tepid the Chicago crowd was tonight for this show, for CM Punk, for everybody basically... Makes me wonder, like, how good is this stuff going to be for All Out on Sunday? You know, I would usually bitch and moan about Orange Cassidy getting a roll-up victory on Jack Evans during the commercial break, but who gives a shit? And, and the legit question, like, does Orange Cassidy have a match on the pay-per-view? I really don't remember. So if he does, forgive me. But if he doesn't, why the fuck is he in this spot on this show? Like, there were some good video packages throughout the night. They, they did some good stuff. Like, the production piece was pretty good. Um, the MJF interview was good. 
you know, when we went to the Chris Jericho JR in ring interview. You know, JR almost threw me off a little bit because he was look, sounding like him, looking like he wanted to freaking cry about it. You know, it's actually added to the moment a little bit. It's actually added some believable, real emotions for two guys that go way back. Um, but, you know, I'd have liked to see more of this stuff. Like, if you did more of this stuff, like, they do some of these video packages and some of these interviews and some of these promos and these recaps. Like, they do a good job of them. And you don't want to do them all the time, but, you know, the way I kind of look at what they did with this show was in a lot of ways it just, on the one hand, you're trying to tease some of the things to build up to some of the things for the pay-per-view, but it left me wanting. It really, really did. Uh, one joy of the night, though, was Brian Cage versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Surprised. Popped. When Powerhouse Hobbs actually won. No complaints from me whatsoever. Um, see what happens next then with Brian Cage and see where they go from here with Powerhouse Hobbs. But these guys both, when I look at these two guys, this is an example of two guys on the single scene that should be getting pushes. And instead, they're kind of canceling and negating each other out and just kind of stuck in some type of purgatory. Because you have too many goddamn people on this roster and you try to get too many people on this damn show and it makes it hard for anybody to really stand out. Why in the hell was QT Marshall given mic time? I know he has a match against Paul White at the pay-per-view. I grant, grant it. So that makes sense. But why? Just why? And even more so, Billy Gunn turns on Paul White? Who's booking this crap? Because now instead of me getting excited, which is going to be hard to do anyways for a QT Marshall, Paul White pay-per-view match, now you got me wanting a Billy Gunn Paul White pay-per-view match. This Billy Gunn looked beastly, especially the shot where he's standing behind uh, Paul White. That looks like a fucking dude. But again, it's 2021. Why the hell is Billy Gunn turning on Paul White? At least, if anything, do this at the pay-per-view. You do this turn before the pay-per-view seems kind of obtuse and silly. I don't know, man. Some weird decisions tonight. Like, take a take Conti. And put her in the ring with Penelope Ford. This shit was terrible. Penelope, bless her heart, she sucks. And everybody knows it. Perfect epitomization of what I've talked about before. Is not everybody needs to be a wrestler. Valet, manager, some other type of personality for Penelope Ford, fine. But do not put somebody like her on television, especially in your featured primary show, and put up in a wet abortion fart like that in the ring? Like all of the exchanges were slow, they were sloppy, they looked terrible. I don't know who structured the match, who the agent was for this, but they deserved to be cunt kicked or dick slapped. I don't know what the fuck, probably both. Because this was god awful. Tay Conti has Penelope Ford in a submission hold, which I'm thinking mercifully is going to end the damn thing, but then Penelope Ford powers out. To then have Tay Conti sit there and hit her with three straight kicks to the face. So basically Penelope Ford no sells so she can hit some type of high spot type of bullshit on Penelope or on uh, Conti for the f near fall. Like, what the fuck does this? Like, Anna J coming out was great, obviously, but that's it. Like, Tay, Con Tay Conti is legit. Tay Conti can be somebody for this company. But they consistently do really, really poorly by their women. Like, this was fucking stupid. And you got, like, the backstage stuff. And you got Nyla Rose and Thunder Rosa and Jade Cargill. You gave Ty Conti and Penelope Ford all of that time to squeeze in these three ladies into some short little bash backstage stuff? Well, again, who's booking this crap? If you're going to have somebody that's green, or if you're going to have somebody, you know, that's not all the way there as an in-ring performer, then book fucking Jade Cargill so that way at least I could drool over and at the same time you're building a monster that you could potentially make some goddamn money with. You're never going to make money with Penelope Ford as an in-ring performer. So stop it! If Conti had come out and squashed her and smashed her, that's one thing. But like competitive 50-50 booking bullshit, the type of crap I would typically expect from an AEW more often than not. It was stupid. 
It was so bad tonight to me from a boredom standpoint that I said, this, yeah, me, I said, this show really needs a spot fest to pick it up. We need an injection of some energy. You got a little bit of that with the eight man tag. Lucha source. Of course, I don't even know why I fucking get excited anymore because he never wins his fucking matches. They go out of their way to make him look bad, but they go out of their way to make sure that Jungle Jack Perry is protected for God knows what fucking reason, because they're morons. Uh, but after the eight-man tag and um, the elite win, out comes Kenny Omega. You know, they, they give him the business. Out comes Christian to try and make a save. Eventually, the whole elite crew takes back control. Kenny Omega has the ring or the cage lowered. And they beat the hell out of Lucha Brothers and Christian, which, you know, makes sense. You know, I don't know if I want to look at the way you're closing out Dynamite. I don't know if I want to look at that and say, you know, that's the way you want to do it. But it makes sense. Like, I'm thinking more of like it makes sense versus whether it was good or not. It absolutely made sense. I don't know if it made sense to have the Young Bucks win the tag match. If you're doing the title change this weekend, though, then that's all that matters. Um, you know, and I think everybody probably presumes, rightfully so, that Kenny Omega's going to retain against Christian. Um, yeah, weird. Weird that they put this in the main event spot. Would be even weirder and more idiotic if this match somehow main evented. But, you know, with it having a steel cage, it might. Uh, it should be semi-main event, personally. That's just me. Because you're going to be in Chicago... The match everybody's going to give a fuck about is Darby Allen and CM Punk. Nothing's going to be able to follow that. You know, even if CM Punk delivers another uh, go to shoulder move on somebody <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> oh my God! CM Punk hit Darby Allen with the gold to shoulder. Can we at least pretend like we're going to hit the goddamn face? Good Lord. <laughs> I'll chalk that up to he's been gone for seven and a half years. I'll give him a little bit of a break there. But yeah, I'm sorry. Like, there was some good stuff on this show, but it was boring. It really was. It's been, it was fascinating to me as I watched the reaction to the show on social media throughout the night. Like, you know when it feels really good. You know when it feels like they're connecting. You know, I've seen them connect in some recent weeks with some shows. This was not it. And you got people still trying to make excuses. You got people still trying to pretend like this is great. Like, you guys got to stop this. Not everyone's going to connect. Not everyone is going to be great. It's just a reality. TV shows, movie series, like, you know, comic strips, books, you know, like, you can go on and on and on. Anytime you have a series of this many, you're going to have duds and you're going to have failures. It did some things to build up towards the pay-per-view, but they certainly wasted some fucking time and there was some boring-ass stuff on this show. It happens. You know, it's almost like they thought CM Punk being there was going to fix everything or take care of everything, and it doesn't. Um, but yeah, like, can we stop pretending like a show like this was great? It was not. Please, don't be like Meltzer or Alvarez. Don't be so biased and cucked for this company that you can't see past the bullshit at any point in time. Try every once in a while to hold yourself to, in the company of AEW to some type of standards, please. As you ruin your credibility when you sit there and say every time that everything's great, every time there's always a fucking excuse, every time there's some type of defense mechanism, there's some type of justification. Like, No, sometimes it just doesn't connect. Tonight's show didn't connect, period. 